Deformers are a set of tools that Maya has that let us alter the shape of objects in unique ways. Let's have a look at how we can use them in terms of modeling. Out of all the deformers covered in this video, Bend is the one I use the most personally. Essentially what it does is bends the mesh. We can find it in Deform Nonlinear Bend. Most of these deformers will add a controller to the world around the object you have selected. For all nonlinear deformers, pressing T on your keyboard will highlight these blue diamonds. These can be moved to alter the shape of the deformation. For all deformers, you can also just look in your attribute editor where you'll have options for which deformation you're using. To get this bend deformer to work correctly, we have to rotate the handle inside the mesh. You can hold J to rotate snap and this will help you line it up perfectly. You can now see if we press our T to get our deformer options, we can just take this middle blue diamond and pull it up and down to see the bend curvature being changed. The outer diamonds here refer to the high bound and low bound. And as you can see, pulling them in or pulling them further out lets you affect more or less of the mesh. We can also move the bend handle through the object. And again, you can see it changes how that affects the overall shape and deformation. Since we're using this for modeling, it's good to know that we have to delete the history of our shape. Otherwise it's still going to be affected by the deforming handle. Click delete history and this will set in the object to be a static object again. Let's now have a look at flare, which is gonna let us expand or shrink one end of an object. Again, deform, nonlinear, this time we're looking for flare. Again, just like bend, this comes with its own little controller, which we can hit T on our keyboard to show up. Flare's controller is pretty easy to use. At the start and end of it, there is a start point and an end point, and then there's two corresponding dots on each end, which are gonna let you squash and stretch in one direction at a time. This might be a good time to use our attribute editor as we could make sure that the flare values are the same to get a uniform or square flare at the top or the bottom. As with our bend, make sure if we wanna set in our deformation, we delete the history. Moving on to our next deformer here, the curve warp. This is not a nonlinear one. And what it lets us do is take an object and warp it around the shape of a curve. We must ensure that we have enough divisions along the length of this object so that it warps correctly around the curve. For simple curve shaped objects, we can of course use our sweep mesh, but where curve warp comes in handy is taking a complex object and getting it into the shape of a curved object, like a wire. To perform a curve warp, select your object, then shift select the curve, head up to deform, and then select curve warp. Your object will be placed as best as it can onto the curve, but we can still adjust it a little bit if we need to. In the attribute editor, have a look for the offset value, which is gonna let us move the object along the curve. Another great one to check out is in mesh scaling, where we have length scale that is going to just let us stretch our object so it fits along the length of the curve a little bit easier. Once you're happy with your final curve shape, you can of course delete history, and then you can safely delete the curve underneath. Next up we have sign. Just like the other deformers, make sure you have enough subdivisions and topology to support the deformation. Find this one in deform, nonlinear, and then sign. Just like the bend deformer, this is gonna give us a handle that we have to rotate inside of the mesh. Hold J to rotate it inside, and then you'll be ready to deform. Press T to open up the deformer's controls, and you can see pulling up this middle one controls the size of the amplitude. It's going to apply a sine wave to your object and we can control this using these diamonds. The outermost blue diamond here controls the wavelength. If we bring it closer to the middle, we're going to get more waves across our mesh. You can see how this might be a great way to make some corrugated metal sheets. The other diamonds here just control the high and low bound and we'll just control where the sine wave starts on the object. As always, deleting history will set in the deformation and create a static mesh. Moving on to our twist deformer, this is going to let us apply a twist through the whole object. Be aware this one requires a lot of topology, so make sure you have enough to support the deformation. Find this one in deform, nonlinear, twist. This one comes with a controller again that we can bring up with pressing T. It has two rings on the top and the bottom. Turning the outer rings adds twist to the object, while the inner ring controls where the twist start and ends. You can see here how I can contain the twist in the middle of the pillar by pulling up the two inner rings. 
be careful not to add too much twist as it can really start to distort the topology. As usual, set in the deformation by deleting the history on the object. The last deformer I'm going to show you here is the lattice. We can assign this deformer by heading to deform and selecting lattice. We can make changes to the shape of the object by moving around the lattice points. To edit these, hold right click over the lattice and select lattice point. These points will act just like vertices where we can select them and we can move them, rotate them and scale them. I find the best use for this deformer is to test different silhouettes for your object and see how different parts of your model would look if they were different sizes. You can add more subdivisions to the lattice by heading to the attribute editor and editing them in the lattice shape node. This will give us finer control of which parts of the object we can deform using the lattice. Another small change we can make to the lattice here is in the FFD node next to it. Untick local and you're going to get a lot softer of a response from the lattice and this will help you shape out some organic shapes a lot easier. Deleting the history on the object will delete the lattice from the scene and will set in any of the deformation you have created.